Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel, the fourth chapter. You would suppose that Nebuchadnezzar had finally gotten the message. Oh, by the way, I want to go, let's, let me start over. I want to go disclaimer here. His name is actually Nebuchadnezzar, but if you'll let me do the traditional, I know I'm picky about making sure things are right, but I'm going to go ahead and call him the traditional, what we've always called him. I meant to do that a couple, three weeks ago, and I forgot to do it. My apologies. Um, uh, we will leave his name at Nebuchadnezzar, and you'd think he would have gotten the the idea and the message the first two times that he had to be uh, corrected. You could technically t call it three times whenever uh, the king gave delicacies to the young men, the wise men, the and when Daniel and his three friends exceeded all the other friends and looked better than they did. Uh, but uh, that was indirect. We know directly he he has already said twice that uh, that he there's nobody that can answer his dream. There's there's nobody that can can uh, even come close to to the image that I've set up in the Valley of Dura. And uh, who who's who's God's going to keep me from you? Uh, that's a notorious question. And people have always found out the hard way there's only one God. And he does find out that God is the only God. Well, you'd think that by the time we got through with chapter 3, verse uh, 29 and 30, when he says, Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God that can deliver like this. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. And you'd thought that that would have settled the issue and he would have gotten the, the idea of who gave him all of this to begin with. And it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick whatsoever. Uh, because as soon as he does that, and we don't, I mean, we, we can speculate times and all. I don't really want to do that. But um, I just want to stick to the book. But you'd suppose that he'd have got the message twice. Now, you kind of give him a little bit of credit that he forgot the first time because nobody here tonight can say you haven't ever forgot anything in your life. Uh, but I forgot what it was. Um, <clears throat> uh, I wondered if that didn't, you guys didn't hear me there. But anyhow. And uh, so, uh, uh, but. It's going to take another time for Nebuchadnezzar to get the message and to really identify that there's only one God. There's only one God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time tonight. We pray we use it wisely. And Father, we thank you so much for your many wonderful, wonderful blessings, especially the greatest blessing we've ever been able to receive, and that is Jesus. And we pray many more people can receive Jesus before it's eternally too late. But Father, we we see in our country, we see all over the world that we need you more and more and more. And as long as you're absent, chaos occurs. Father, we pray that you'll help us tonight to get a better understanding of your word. And we just pray for the forgiveness of our sins. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. The strange thing about chapter four is that Daniel doesn't... Uh, doesn't write this. I don't mean that it's not in the book of Daniel. I don't mean it's not inspired. I don't mean that that it's not biblical. This is from Nebuchadnezzar's point of view. This is from Nebuchadnezzar talking and saying the things that he's saying. And so he writes because he controls 80% of the world. So he writes to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs! 
and how mighty his wonders, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts on my head and visions of my head or excuse me, I'm sorry, the thoughts on my bed and the visions on my head troubled me. And therefore I issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they make known may make it known to be the interpretation of the dream. Now, I want to stop here a second. Again, I don't know how long it was between chapters 3 and 4. But again, if you've got someone who's already told you twice accurately down to the down to the last minute detail wouldn't you just turn around and call him in <laughs> but he doesn't he's the king he's the king of 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 the world basically and so he goes and he calls in the magicians the chaldeans and the soothsayers this time he told them the dream. You remember from chapter 2, he didn't tell them the dream. But they did not make known to me its interpretation. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. By the way, they had multiple gods. One of them was Bel, one of them was, ne uh, was uh, Bal uh, uh, Nebo. And I told them the dream before him, saying, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of holy God is in you, and no secret troubles you, explain to me the visions of my dream that I've seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven, he cried aloud and said, Thus, chop down the tree and cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave, leave the stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze. And in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with dew, the dew of heaven and let him get, graze with the beasts. On the grass of the earth, let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast, and let seven times pass over him. This decree, this decision is by the decree of the watchers, and the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of the men, give it to whomever he will, and gives it to whomever he will, sets it over the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the Spirit of God is in you. This is almost strange that he, first of all, can remember every part of the dream. You and I dream every night. You may not remember it. About 98% of all dreams, we don't remember. Uh, my granny one time asked me, what were you dreaming about last night? And I used to stay with her and, and make sure that she was all right, and then I'd, we'd go to school. And uh, then I'd come home, and I usually was the one that kind of stuck around. I wanted to stick around anyway and take care of her. And uh, I said, what do you mean? She says, about 1.30 this morning, you screamed out, stop, stop, here's the cactus. I went, I did? And she goes, yeah. I said, 
beats the felon out of me. I don't even remember dreaming that. She said, well, man, you made it loud enough in here. And then she said, I kind of smiled and smirked and I made sure you didn't get up and sleepwalk and uh, sleep, uh, walking in your sleep. And I was like, I really dream, dreamt that. And she goes, yeah. Oh man, by the way, she used to have the heaviest blankets. I wished I had them again because I'd go to sleep and I'd be freezing to death. And then about 1130 at night, I'd kick all of them off. Granny goes, why are you doing that? And I'd have the heater right next to the, to the bed. But anyhow, I digress. Isn't it interesting how he remembers every detail? And I can't help but think that the Holy Spirit was involved in this. Now, you're not going to read the Holy Spirit gave him, you know, all this and this and this. However, you are seeing that he remembers every small, minute detail. I mean, look at verse 13. A watcher. Now, I don't know who the watcher is. God didn't tell us. He just told us that there was a watcher a holy one, and incidentally, holy one and watcher are not capitalized. Uh, so kind of indicates to us that there's some angel, maybe it was Michael or Gabriel. I'm just speculating just that far because those are the two archangels that we know about. Might not have been those two. Might might have been somebody else, but he he knew that it was a holy one coming out of heaven. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this is he's always worshiping. He's got all these gods, and we know three of them for sure. Marduk, I said uh, Nebo while ago, I meant Marduk, Bel, and and then you've got uh, Belteshazzar. Um, you also have the other three, the Shadrach, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are at least six gods that we know about. Probably was more if you looked it up in the historical book, and I didn't do that. But nonetheless, he's got all these minute details, and all of a sudden he says, chop down the tree. Can't you imagine environmentalists being in, in shock over that? Yeah, uh, chop, chop down the tree. Cut off its branches. Strip it of its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it, and the birds from its branches. Don't, however, take out the stump. <laughs> that sounds weird, doesn't it? You, you cut down, you're cutting down basically the tree, except, wait a minute, don't cut the stump. Leave the stump there, leave the roots in it, and then take a band of iron, or then the angel took a band of iron, or the holy watcher took a band of iron and put it all around the stump. Now, is anybody going to go do that here? <laughs> Obviously, this is a dream, but I don't know of anybody. Can you imagine if we advertised out here that we're going to take a tree stump that's in the ground? And it, uh, by the way, we used to have one here before our neighbor down the street knocked it over uh, with his car. I'm, I'm confessing tonight, Vern and I laughed a little bit because, you know, he was drunk. I, I didn't say anything. And uh, so, uh, and, and, and then with a brand of iron and bronze and, and the tender grass of the field, I, dad never, dad never told me to go get bronze and iron and surround a tree. I wonder if he had thought I was as crazy as when I got my first pair of permanent glasses. When I said, where's that tower come from? He says, been here since we had the farms. The first time I've seen it. <laughs> he looked at me and said, are you sure you are able to drive? I said, yeah, I'm now. Um, let him graze with the beasts. What? Let who graze with the beast? The the tree root? The stump? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let's try this again. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Verse 15. Let him graze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the Senate's by the word of the holy ones. 
in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whomever he will and sets it over the lowest of men. Now, this is why you and I are nervous about our country. This is why you and I are nervous about the direction of our country. Because we want our country to get back to God. And we, we think that our country has gone the wrong, wrong way. Now, he does give it to whom he wills. How can he give it to whom he wills? Who owns it? <laughs> you know who owns it? God. So he gives it to whom he wills. Now, it's even strange in itself that he would even choose the most evil set of rulers to conquer God's people. I mean, for example, Assyria came in and Babylon inherited a lot of their discipline stuff. It's one of the reasons Assyria and Babylon weren't very well liked by the world. And God chose them to go and take out the Israelites, and then 40 years later, take out the Judeans, the, the people of Judah? I mean, why would God do that? That's why they thought Jeremiah was absolutely crazy. Whenever Jeremiah said, we're going into captivity for 70 years. Verse 18, this dream my king Nebuchadnezzar have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, Declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to be the interpretation, but you're able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. All right, Nebuchadnezzar's got it. He's got it. Why are you snickering there, people? He's got the whole entire message. He finally has figured out that God of all gods is the real God. Verse 19. By the way, don't hold on to that as being true. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time. You know, I, I, I hear people say something along these lines. Well, I had the most wonderful dream. I dreamed that God, in fact, the one preacher said God took him to heaven for a weekend. Um, I want to ask him, if I ever get to meet him, how do you explain John 3.13? No man has ever been to heaven. No person's ever been to heaven except the one who descended. So when did you get the special privilege? And he walked around with Abraham the whole entire weekend. You ought to, you ought to go... I, don't believe anything he said, but you ought to hear this. I mean, he you got to give him at least the creativity credit for it. I mean, tell you, it was just, I'm sitting there listening to this for as long as I can. I'm like, that didn't happen. <laughs> that didn't happen. But because Daniel is shocked. He's not only shocked, he's astonished at what was said to him. And his thoughts made him feel better, right? I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> no. His thoughts did what? They troubled him. The idea of troubled him here is, man, he's like, oh, ho, ho, ho. oh. Ho, ho. So the king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, don't let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar said, answered and said, my lord, May the dream concern those who hate you and its interpretation concern your enemies. What? Don't, don't the enemies want this to happen? No. They, they do, they think, but they really don't because who are they fighting? Who put, Belt, who put Nebuchadnezzar in power? God. You're fighting Nebuchadnezzar, you're fighting God. The tree you saw, which grew big and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, and which was food for all, in which under the beasts of the field dwelt, and whose branches the birds of the heavens had their home. It's you, O king. Now, would you love to be described as a tree stump? 
Roots and all. It's you, O King, who have grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. Here's why, here's part of the reason it troubled Daniel. Inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stumps and roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times passes over. This is the interpretation of the dream, O king. This is the decree of the Most High which has come upon my Lord the king. They'll drive you from men. Your dwelling will be with the beasts of the field. And they'll make you eat grass like oxen. They'll wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Wait a minute, I want to stop here. Hey, let's go back up here just for a second to eight, verse 18. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? What, I mean, what did uh, Daniel say? And then Nebuchadnezzar say in, in turn, you are able for the spirit. Who's the spirit? What do we call him? Who do we call him? Sorry. The Holy Spirit. For the spirit of the Lord God's in you. Well, wait a minute. Wait just a second. They'll drive you, verse 25, they'll drive you from men. Your dwelling will be with the beasts of the field. They'll make you eat grass like oxen. Who's the they? The holy watchers. The watchers. They'll wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times will pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Wait just a second. What has Nebuchadnezzar missed? Well, what he's missed... <laughs> is down in verse 28, but we'll get there. Inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom will be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. And perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Daniel's second fear is that Nebuchadnezzar is going to kill him. He's going to, he's going to hurt him. He's going to do something. And he's going to do something to the three friends. And none of that happens because Nebuchadnezzar says, don't let the dream scare you. Well, I, I don't know if I can describe this very well, but I'm going to try. Picture that you are talking to the king. The king wants you. The king is talking to you. The king has a very good impression of you. You are very, very accepted by the king. And all of a sudden, you, you hear all these visions, and you turn white as a ghost. When I had my episode in 11, the nurse who we worked with, at the, who I worked with at school, she said, guys, I, we said all set at the table. She says, guys, he's a white guy, but I want you to know he was whiter than that. And I was like, yep, I just about died that day. And... Uh, and I told them, I said, but my retirement package is out of this world. And uh, they said, what do you mean? I said, oh, I'm going home. I, what do you mean you're going home? I'm going, and I talked to them a little bit, and uh, hopefully it'll stick one of these days. Uh, I don't have to see it if it does. The Lord will take care of that. But what Nebuchadnezzar forgot, what he needed to learn was to whom does all of this belong? He couldn't figure that out. Now, how do I know? Well, look at verse 28, and I want to tell you who's partly behind that. We know who's partly behind it. If God comes along and sets something good, who's going to go try to mess it up? That's the devil. Now, he comes along. You're not going to read that there. You're not going to see that there, but you know the devil's MO. He does it every time. And so what happens? All of this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the year or 12 months. 
at the end of the 12 months, he was walking about in the royal palace and he was saying, praise to the God of Daniel, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and look at the great things he has allowed me to have. That's what we wanted him to say. He could have had more had he just acknowledged God. He could have had the entire world had he acknowledged God. But listen to what he says, is not this great Babylon that, uh, who's built? I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. And they all lived happily ever after. If you've been in my classes long enough, you know that it's true. <laughs> No, while the words were still in his mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and they will drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They will make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, the word was concern, was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Can you picture that in your mind? That's hard for me to picture. This guy who has been the most powerful individual in the world who could go anywhere in the world and conquer things in just an instant is turned into an animal because God made it so. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is still talking. And he says, at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the most high God and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time. At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, who of all of whose works are truth, his ways are justice, and those who walk in, in pride, he is able to put down. You think Nebuchadnezzar got the message? <laughs> Apparently so. Because the next chapter we'll see, Lord willing, next time, is that his grandson, Belshazzar, Belshazzar takes over, and Belshazzar just didn't learn anything. He didn't learn anything whatsoever. I want to point out a couple of three things tonight, and then the lesson is yours. First of all, God can do anything he wants. He can't do everything. That almost sounds like I'm being sacrilegious here. But we know he can't lie. And he can't go against his system of justice. He can't do any of that. But he can do about anything he pleases. And when you look at this, one of the toughest questions for new Bible students is, how in the world could God send the most evil empire in the world to conquer his people? Because God disciplines his children. That's the second thing we need to learn. God said, I've had enough. And he let that generation die off. And the descriptions that he gave in, in the book of, of Isaiah and, and Ezekiel, especially, the bodies would be stacked on top of each other. The bird, the, the ravenous birds would, would gorge themselves on all the bodies. Nobody was going to bury them. They'd be in the middle of the street, and you're like, ugh. And you'd have thought that would have woke them up. 
You would have thought that would have turned them around. It didn't. They thought Jeremiah was absolutely nuts. They would go around and they'd say to him, why in the world are you saying the things that you're saying? The economy's never been better. We, we have more, more, we get along with more people. We, 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 we trade with more people. We do all the things that, that we were supposed to be doing to begin with. And you're telling us we're going into 70 years of Babylonian captivity now. Then you had the, the popular prophet come along and in chapter 29 and yeah, 28, I mean, and tell you, oh, we're not going to do No, 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 no. Jeremiah's wrong. It's only two years. And God said, you've replaced it when he broke the yoke of wood around Jeremiah's neck. You replaced it with the yoke of iron. Well, the third thing that we notice out of this is God's absolutely true. Everything down to the minute detail that God said was going to happen was going to happen. Took place. A lot of people think that that uh, what I used to think, I'm confessing a little bit here tonight. I've told you this before, some of you. But I, I started beginning to get into an idea that was totally wrong. But you see, when you're a parent, you have to be, you have to say no. You have to be the big meanie. But when you get to be a grandparent, you get to say, yes, I haven't got there. And so what God did was, is that he was a parent in the Old Testament. And when he sent Jesus into the world and die for the world and intercede for the world today, and about those who've, who've obeyed him, that uh, he, uh, he became a grandparent. And then I got to studying about that again. And then went, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. What was the first sin in the world? Lying. What was the first sin in the church? Lying. What happened to Adam and Eve? They started the dying process. What happened to the church, first century church that was meeting when two people lied to God, the Holy Spirit? They died. God killed them. I had a member of the church one time get all over me. Said, Don't say God killed them. I said, well, who, who gives life? Well, God. I said, who takes life? Well, I just don't like the way you said that. Okay, well, I get that. But, but it's still true because great fear came on the church. It was right down to the minute. Now, I want to discuss very briefly the idea of the seven times. We know that to be, in Hebrew language, Hebrew, even apocalyptic language, to be years. You go over to Daniel, or you go over a little bit to Daniel um, 7, and when he talks about 49 sevens and all that stuff, and you figure up the years, and to the very day that Daniel prophesied is the very day Jesus died. And buried and then three days later rose from the dead and this was seven years seven years do you think god knew what he was doing of course you do i know he knew what he was doing he told nebuchadnezzar you're going to get back what you temporarily lost there's another Bible character I'm thinking about that we studied about not too long ago who lost just about everything and God gave it back to him. Wonder who that was and gave him more. Wonder who that was. Job. God knows what he's doing. It doesn't matter if we think he knows what he's doing. It doesn't matter if we guess what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And by the way, Go back one more time to verse 18. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but I want to go back to the last phrase here. Since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known the interpretation, but you're able for the spirit of God is in you. And the purpose of all of this was so that verse 25 they will wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times pass over you till you know 
that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Well, let's see what happens in verse 36 one more time. At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was resorted, I was restored to my kingdom. Who restored him? God. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he's able to put down. Wonder if he got the message, who rules in heaven? Sometimes you and I would love that 536 individuals would get that message. Now, you and I want to tell them, I, I don't wish you will on any of them. I don't wish any of them harm. I don't, I don't wish any of that at all. But I sure want them to start paying attention that there's only one God. And whether you support Trump, Harris, whoever, I don't care. That's none of my business. But I love what Richard Watson, one of the elders at Palm Beach Lake, said a few weeks ago. He says, doesn't matter who's in the White House as long as we know who's in the house. As long as he's there, that's fine. That's fine. We may not like everything. We may not accept everything. We may not agree with everything. But God's still on his throne, and he's still ruling. And I said four years ago, anybody that heard me, said, I'm not sure why we elected the current president. I'm not sure why he's in power, but one of these days we're going to know. And whoever gets elected next Tuesday, we're going to know why we elected he or she. Because who's still reigning? Well, duh, you know who's reigning by now. You already knew that anyway. But you know who's reigning. Nothing gets behind, beside him. Nothing gets by him. That's right, God. And he's in charge. And praise God for it. Let's pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we've had tonight to study your word. Thank you so much for the privilege of being able to open it. Thank you, Father, for being added to the kingdom through your grace, mercy, and love. And we don't always walk according to your way. We struggle with things sometimes as well. We need your strength, need your forgiveness. We need to be reminded of your love and your steadfastness. Thank you so much, Father, for blessing us tonight to be here. Pray you'll keep us all safe and in your care. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins. It is in Jesus that we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you.